Hey, just ask it. Captain Lee and Sergeant Lee too here. Not everyone that goes to the public safety meetings attends our monthly council meeting. So I didn't want everything to be duplicative, but I thought it'd be nice to have them show up. And if you have any questions uh, that didn't recently pass public nuisance law or anything else, they're here. So I hand it off to you. Thank you. No, no thank, you. thank you for inviting me. I haven't been to the North End Waterfront California Board meeting. This is my first one here, although we do come to, as Dave mentioned, a North End Public Safety meetings, and some of the folks here tonight are often in, in attendance and bring a lot of issues to my attention. Um, these neighborhood councils play an important part in, in city government. You guys really do, and I thank you for your service, because what you do is the people going before the licensing board come here looking for letters of support, as you guys know. Those are important, that's an important function that you guys uh, carry out on behalf of the city. Giving the residents, per not permission, but approval for these businesses going forward when they're going up to the city licensing board. So I know you guys take a lot of uh, care in giving those letters, it, it, and we appreciate the work that goes into that. For the North End, it was, a good year in overall part one crime, as David mentioned, we did have a 10% decrease, which is very good. But on the flip side of it, one of the big issues in the North End is really not so much the part one crime. It's not the robberies and, and, and crimes that occur in some parts of the city that really drive neighborhood crime, neighborhood issues. A lot of the issues in the North End are related to noise and disorder, usually in the evenings. It's really, it, it bothers people when they're trying to sleep, and a lot of residents, really that's a big complaint that I receive, it is annoying. Now working with the City Council of Sally and my team, uh, with, with Steve, and you know, with the North End Public Safety Group that we have, there was a new ordinance proposed, and it was, as Steve mentioned, the mayor signed it today. And that's an important tool for us to deal with some of the neighborhood issues. It gives us a chance, where there's a problem property, to put the landlord on the hook also, and not just giving the tenant or going there, the police going there multiple times. This way here, there's a, a process set up where the police go, we issue a written warning, which goes to the landlord and to the tenant. On the second appearance, on the second loud party, there's a $100 violation, and the third by third time the police will get, we have to be a third time, there will be a $300 violation. So it's a, a series of step increases, and it's really to bring attention, not to punish the landlord, but to bring the landlord Make them aware that we're aware of what's going on in their property and hopefully address it so we don't have to have multiple visits by the police and it doesn't keep being a problem in the neighborhood. And again, I want to thank uh, Councilman Lamantino for pushing that, uh, pushing that, uh, come, that nuisance ordinance forward. Now, I did want to, as uh, David mentioned, part of our coming here tonight was to uh, open it up and let folks ask me questions or bring things to my attention that we might, uh, not, all, we might not have received normally. Do I see a hand on the back? Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. First time? Just a gentleman. No, 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 no. Just, just for the purposes of... This gentleman at the end, I can touch his name. Marie, name and address. Just name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry. 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 I'm that was one of the addresses? Yes. How come nobody mentioned 153 Salem Street when the cops had to come down with the rich from Suffolk? How come that wasn't mentioned? That was January 4th. Friday night, almost going into Saturday morning. But the meeting was on January 3rd, right? The meeting was the night before that incident. That was just on the Christ Day. Yes. That was the January 3rd oh, meeting. Oh, okay. So in other words, that- We'll talk that about that. Why did our policemen bring that up? I don't understand why they didn't mention it. Well, maybe we can, we can ask them about because it. Because we're going to do that at the public safety meeting when we have it. Because the crime yes, stats are done. We weren't able oh, to do okay. the crime uh, stats. I could, well, I thought we, he brought up an well, incident you, on Cheese Street. We could have brought up this incident on one Not to raise the I'm not, I don't mean to raise the capital. But, but why they're here tonight is they come at the first Thursday of every month and we'll right. discuss the statistics and the incidences from the previous month at that meeting. But tonight we want to discuss some, like, general, okay. general, general, um, Issues like the nuisance ordinance and maybe um, going back out uh, uh, doing some. That's guys working out. Okay. Uh, that's a good point, Steve, about the hours. Uh, that's been brought up before. Is there ways to, to roll back the hours on, on some premises where people believe there's been problems? 
I think that's one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight. Um, did, did people have concerns about any of the uh, licensees? Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk about this. <laughs> 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 not, not talking about if there's a problem with somebody that has a pouring license. You could step in. Yeah, but we, we can't those. go back there, Robbins. Obviously, they go from the license of the board, yeah. as, as you know. Yeah, we, 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 we do. The process would be we receive complaints, right? Or we conduct our own investigation. The license employee has to, to possibly the detectives aside, that go out and check premises for compliance. Could you explain, just, for the, just to educate the uh, residents, could you explain the two detectives you're speaking of? I know there's two that. Yeah, there's two detectives. That monitor establishments yeah. with liquor licenses on even bars and nightclubs. Can you explain how, how those guys, what their role is in terms of the licensing process and also when when there is an issue at a licensed premise, um, how is the police, how do they get, how are they involved in the process? So if there was a process with an establishment, what would be the role of the Boston Police Department? Like what, would you guys write a report and send it to licensing? How does that work? Well, just briefly, there's two detectives assigned to a licensing board. They go out and conduct proactive investigations. They're not waiting for a complaint to come. They're going out, they're checking premises, they're doing stings. They go and see, you know, they make observations. They don't, they're in plain clothes. They walk into a bar, they see if someone over serving. Are they underage people? So that's what their function is. They're real proactive investigations on licensees. And these guys are, are great. They're out there. They're riding places every night. On our side, for the regular District A1, for my sergeants and my detectives, can all also issue license permits violations. Usually, for, for our side, we issue those when there's a complaint. So someone will call 911, they'd be either be an assault or whatever might have happened in the license premise or disturbance, we'll respond. And then our policy is if there's a if it occurs on the premise, we write a license premise violation. Now, the licensee has a right to a hearing. And often people don't realize, they say, hey, I know the police did a violation. That's true, but they have a right to a hearing. And they go and they present their side, and the license and board makes a determination. Now that's from the city license and board. We also have an entertainment license too. So there's two, two boards that can listen, or that, depending on what the violation is, that will take the violation and determine the course of action. Now Patricia Malone runs the consumer affairs. That's for entertainment licenses. So if it's a bar or restaurant, they may have some sort of entertainment on their license, and she would handle those. And other common victualless licenses or alcohol beverages license would be the city of Boston licensing board. And then you also have public hearings. You're certainly welcome as a member of the public to go present evidence even. They'll always ask if someone has anything to add on those type of uh, hearings. They make a determination to roll back hours. Not, not us on, on the police. Now myself, or Sergeant Lima, will sometimes be, if it's a major incident, will be called up by ourselves because they don't want to hear from us. I'll, you know, they'll say to myself, I'm not available, I'll send Sergeant Lima. So some people say, oh, you go to all the hearings? I don't go to all the hearings. If it's a major hearing, they ask me to go, I attend, and I, I'll, I'll testify what the police department, uh, what we believe should be done. Again, it's their decision, it's not ours. Which difference, you know, it's a difference in some cities where the police can shut a place down. Not here. We have a different civilian review, and they decide, not 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 on the police. Would you be able to interject your personal opinion? And feel free to jump in, Sergeant Lima, regarding where, based on police reports, when you hear from the residents, when you observe on the street personally, where do you feel the areas of where uh, the areas where north, the hot spots, right? Sources of well, consistent you know, the noise. You know, What'll happen is, and it's not just here, but anywhere. If there's a premise that has later hours than some of the other premises, that will often be a magnet for people showing up later. And these tend to, just talking generally, because I am, I do have latency powers, and I don't want to, you know, call out anyone that I might have to testify against. They will tend to draw these types of neighborhood complaints. That's why I always advise neighborhood council when you're giving out these letters of approval, be very careful what you're doing. 
you could be opening up a can of worms that we're going to have to, all of us are going to have to deal with later. Especially with that's the only, that place is looking for an extension of operating hours, or they're looking to have their entertainment pump back another hour. That will usually be like a magnet for problems. It's better for us when the places are all closing at the same time and have one place open later than the, than the other. Now some places have been open just from, from years and years ago you see permission and have later licenses than some of the other places. Now what will what will happen is the other places will want to catch up to them and have the same hours, which again is really something you have to consider for the residents whether they want that. I know a lot of the residents would rather have the other place move back to it. The other spots are so you don't have that place that's an attractive nuisance. Now the place may be cooperative with the police, they may be doing the right thing, it's just you're open late, you're going to draw a different clientele than somebody else. If I may, yes. um, from my experience, I, I've lived in the North End my entire life. Um, there are a couple of portholes into the North End, Salem Street, Canvas Street, and Richmond Street. And it seems to me that aside from the noise that comes from people having parties in, in residences, that most of, of the noise, the street noise, is coming from bars that are outside the neighborhood, um, young, young people getting you know, drunk and then coming back home. And it, it always occurred to me that if, if there was a, a police officer stationed at each of those portholes, that we could sort of curb some of the noise and disperse the crowds. Um, for, for instance, I, I live on Fulton Street. My bedroom face the alley between Fulton Street and Commercial Street. Um, on Friday and Saturday night, from 2.10 to 3, 3 a.m., I hear droves of people walking up Richmond Street, screaming, women screaming, guys screaming, singing, breaking bottles, running up and down the alley. And it always it always just seems so simple to me that if if there was a cruiser parked right in that alley, there's a chain link fence. If the chain link fence was dropped, cruiser backed right up and, and we know what time it is. It's you know from two ten to three AM. Even if it just stopped a few people, then maybe they would get the hint not to be screaming down, dispersing large crowds. Same on Salem Street, same on Hannah Street. Before these group of, of drunk individuals come into the neighborhood, disperse them immediately. Maybe you know, maybe arrest somebody if, if they are that disorderly. It's it's you know, it, it's it seems kind of simple. Maybe it's 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 not as simple as um, I'm making it out to be. Friday and Saturday nights, between uh, say oh, two a.m. and three a.m. Are the busiest times of police station. Now we've put extra offices, we've done that, putting extra offices in, in the North End. We've done just what you said, Tommy Lehmer is going to talk in a second about going out and trying to get people to lower their voices and disperse. Now what happens is a lot of these folks are residents that are returning home to their apartments. And they're coming from bars and as you mentioned. The the problem is, if we, on this street, they're on this street. It, it can't be everywhere. And I know it seems simple to put somebody in cross street, say the animal across. We were actually doing that, trying to do that. And we found out we got to move them down the street. We put a sergeant with them, say, where can we put them? Try to put two guys up there. They're up this end. They're making noise as soon as they get past them. Because people, A, don't realize how loud they're being because they're intoxicated. They don't realize how loud their voice is carried in a neighborhood where you have the residents, you know, right on top of our business area, you have residents living, everyone's real close together, all the apartments are real close together, and their voices really carry. But they're not realizing that because they're intoxicated. Talking loudly is not against the law. Unless you're over 80 decimals of some crazy number, which we have to have a sound media to do it, to enforce that statute. So it's really just us telling them that. We don't have the enforcement power for that. Unless you, you know, if someone's involved in a fight or creating a service or, you know, knocking something over, things like that, yes, that's disturbing the peace. And we can take criminal action against that person. And we'll, we have, we have.
But most times, it's just like you said, it's being there and trying to tell people to show your voices, which works until they walk away a little bit and then they start talking again because they forgot that the police just told them a lot to blow their voices or they still don't think that they're talking loud. If you've dealt with drunk people, it is very difficult to get them to control their drunken behavior. And that's really what a lot of what we see is people that have overserved, they've been overserved at the bars that they're coming from, and now they're walking back to the neighborhood. So we've tried to have the two detectives that we were talking about, Steve, find out. We actually had a little thing we were trying to do last year, see where they're coming from, see if they identify the bars. I think one of the bars probably was um, Fab, was it? Mm -hmm. So we, we go back and then charge them with or investigate them for robust service. So we do try to do things, and we have tried to do things throughout the year to address neighborhood issues. But the issue that you mentioned, that's, along with the house parties, yeah, it's the people walking home Friday and Saturday nights that are, that are out of problem and making a lot of noise. And I know Tommy went out and took a reporter out with them to have her firsthand observe some of the issues. You want to talk about that a little bit, Tommy? Thank you, Captain. Um, the, um, for those of you who hadn't heard it before, we walked from about, I'd say almost 12 o'clock to about 3.15, 3.30 in the morning. And uh, I'd say I made several hundred contacts that night with the people who were out in the street. And I was somewhat surprised that they weren't, the majority were, were not college kids, they were young professionals. And these young professionals, as been mentioned, um, are coming from a lot of the, uh, the bars, the clubs, the restaurants. You can almost say throughout the city, but probably more so in the broad and state street areas. Captain mentioned McFadden's are coming from the Penial Hall Marketplace or maybe coming from the TD Garden area. There's an awful lot of clubs that are down there, nightclubs. And as they came back into the area in droves, I mean in droves, I was somewhat amazed at 2 o'clock in the morning how many young professionals are out, you know, coming back into the North End. And with the reporter there and a photographer and having you know, the captain assigned uh, offices at the uh, corners of Hanover and Cross, as had been requested at one of our meetings at Salem and Cross uh, due to the noise factor. And at, at our most recent public safety meetings, uh, we respond to things like that. And that was the response from the public safety group was that they're coming up uh, Hanover from Cross, they're coming up Salem from Cross. And that's where we actually put the resources. We didn't get as much on Richmond Street until tonight. Um, but anyways, long and making a short story yet, the, the crowds just kept coming. And uh, you found that, you know, they were looking for maybe some eateries or just hanging out on Hanover Street. We would go from one end of Hanover Street to the other just saying, hey, you know, could you just quiet down, you know, could you kind of make your way to your homes? So it was sort of educational for them. It was highly educational for me just to see the amount of people that were out. But it wasn't Mardi Gras, but I'll tell you, they were a happy bunch. A very happy bunch, but on the flip side, that happy bunch affects the quality of life of every single person that's in their house, be it elderly, have kids, or they have to get up early in the morning, or they just like to be in bed by 10 o'clock. It's, 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 a, it's a change. Uh, and, you know, again, just for different things, we'll come up with placards, you know, to quiet down, please. We've had placards for the motorcycles. As the captain mentioned, we've had offices out on foot patrol, anti-crime. We, we even had the mobile operations, motorcycles down here for a short occasion. So we've tried an awful lot of things. But it, it really is sort of educational. And Phil and Matt, uh, you know, have really helped us with their, uh, their media outlets uh, to get that out there to the public. And, uh, and hopefully these young professionals are, are, are catching on as we actually go to their apartments with a lot of party calls. Yeah, I mean, really, like you mentioned, Tommy, it's really a public education component that we see with all these folks. And it's tough to educate somebody, and Phil will back up on this at 2 o'clock in the morning when they've had 10 beers in them. It, it's tough for them to get the message. Now, we tried to give them, uh, we did those, be considering your neighbor cards. Right. That's something else we tried to We tried to give them cards as they're walking down the street. Figure maybe when they slow her up and they see that the police gave them Boston police, you know, you me allowed, please be considering your neighbor cards. I, I don't know, I'm willing to take suggestions on this, on how to get the message up to folks who are really the, they're the, your neighbors, right? They may not be known to most of the folks here, but they're, they're young professionals, they've moved into the neighborhood, they're living there, they're renting a condo, where they're doing it. 
the other folks we have to try and educate. And if anyone has good suggestions or whatever suggestions, we will take them. Yeah. I have a question about sort of the late night um, food thing component that you guys are talking about. What, I can think of a couple of things in North Island, sort of after hours. Do you think those attract people? Or is there a benefit of having, you know, people on the street, like eyes open and lights up on, so that these people know that they're in a the neighborhood, that there are people who are out and care? You know what, it, it, it's a good point. I think it works a little bit both ways. Certainly, you walk right, this just will come up here on the street now. All those folks out there going to restaurants, those are all eyes and ears. And it's very tough to commit a crime right in front of those folks to be right on their cell phone and call the police. So that, that's helpful. What I was talking about is the, the late nights, where it's, you know, 2.30 in the morning. Are people looking to get something to eat after they've had a few beers? I think so. So you're going to have those folks who might go home, shall we say, go back to their apartments. Now, if it's a nice night out, now you have a little chance to linger. And they might be an attractive young yeah, lady walk by. Now they're going to call over to work. It's more noise, though. It's more nonsense. And it, 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 it bothers people. Do you, do you feel as though that, that the majority of, of the, the troubled areas are out of the North End and people coming back home? I, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't really reasonably think that the liquor licenses that that are with the restaurants, you know, serving serving some wine while people are having dinner and whatnot. You don't really think that that's the problem, or, or do you do you think that that's the problem, or do you think it contributes? You know, most of, most of the establishments in the North End, though, they're not they're not being the problem. They're, they're restaurants serving a bottle of wine with it. Right. That, that's not what we're talking about. Um, we don't have like nightclub nightclubs that are they're drawing people from all over like we do with some of the other sections that you know that I have on my district, like downtown theater district. You have large nightclubs. Cassidy, 800 people, drawing people from all over. They have a huge fights when they're breaking. We don't have that, that type of issue. So I'm not talking about that type of issue. Most of it I would say is people coming, coming, coming back. Walking. Yes. Now, I don't think our bars and restaurants that they don't draw that that, that I would call it a rough clientele, but we have it in other parts of the district that we've seen you know, serious incidents. So we had four homicides last year on District 1. All of those were related to nightclubs. I mean, that's, that's high for us. And that is a trend or a pattern. I don't know what, I guess it is. It, it's certainly something we're concerned about. But that's what you know, nightclub activity brings. And I don't, you know, we haven't had that here. But, it's a big one. but if you're serving, say, if you're serving even, you know, pizza or something, you're not, say, causing a problem by serving a pizza, but if it's another place for people to gather around, hang around, I mean, that, that's the issue. It's really noise related to some late night slots. Just real quick, can we, you know, District Day 1, we go to monthly meetings with the Midtown Park Plaza that covers the Tremont Street Corridor, right down at Casino Royale, which is the old Roxy. We cover Bay Village, Chinatown, the Leather District, the Wharf District, which is the waterfront, the custom house area, and the West End most recently we're dealing with the roast beef place that wants an extension until 2 a.m. So we're dealing with these types of issues in all these neighborhoods. They have a high, heavy end of foot traffic because that's where the clubs really are. And what we find down there are huge brawls. We've had some occasional shootings and stabbings, as the captain mentioned, four homicides. What we are seeing in the North End, again, I'm not saying everybody's a happy bunch, but it's a loud, loud, raucous group of people. We're fortunate in one sense that we're not having that other type of activity. But again, as we address all the issues in the neighborhood, we're finding a lot of quality of life issues here. And again, as part of the captain's plan, it's really to try and get the officers out there to be visible and just to remind them to quiet down. And that's sort of the educational piece that we're trying to promote. Some of the things, you know, that you're really asking, is it a, I think he's trying to say, is it a tough crowd? That tough crowd we're finding in some of those other neighborhoods, and again, we go to those public safety meetings, and we're trying to address that. One of the ways we've done is we've had offices out there on overtime that's reimbursed through the clubs. We brought that up before about the late night activity 
for all the restaurants that are on the north end. The amount of restaurants on Hanover Street and Salem Street, we brought that before the public safety group. Maybe it's time that maybe they all chip in and maybe come up with some type of a walking officer that might be available from whether it's 10 to 2 or from 12 at night to 4 o'clock in the morning. Because again, they're responsible, their partners in the north end, they have an effect on the quality of life. And, and again, we're all about the partnership, the problem solving, and the prevention. When you have that many restaurants and valet and everything else that goes with it, you know, they have to, I think they have to buy into, you know, that some of these issues, they, they, they sort of have a little bit to do with it. Maybe not as much as Captain, people have mentioned that they'd be have a lot of people pouring back in, but but again, it's, it's the most active place, one of the most active places in the city, not just Friday and Saturday night, but Sunday and Thursday, and it's busy seven nights of the week of the whole summer. It's just, this is a busy, active place, and people love to come down here. They love to have a good time, and they want to stay out late. And then for the people who live here that are young professionals, and go into their houses, because I do knock on their doors, when I hear, like, say, an elderly woman that's complaining on Unity Street about this apartment, that unit, that unit, this place, the pressure, you talk to those younger professionals who live next door, to, they're oblivious to it. That's just the way things are. They're, they're okay with it. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a funny moment. We've done that in some of the other areas where we have a lot of activity, a lot of nightclubs, down in State and Broad Street. Both the merchants there, the club owners, pay for a neighborhood patrol, like a GTL, as you, as you mentioned. Theater district also. Uh, Wilston Place area. Wherever we have a lot of clubs together, our message has been for them, if they would, they're, they, you know, they're not required to, but we recommend to them that they pay for a roving patrol out on the street. What's an hourly rate? Just curious in terms of what it would cost to try to put somebody on. Um, the union hourly rate? Yeah, there's, there's an hourly rate. Uh, it's a minimum of four hours. The pros are four hours. It's, uh, I'm going to say it's a, $48. It's something like that. I don't know the exact hourly rate. Yeah, $40. Well, the department takes some of the money for uh, administrative purposes. They take 10%. But it was like, I think it might even be 48 I don't know the exact rate, but it is something like that. So they, they pay, pay for that. It's not a lot. Well, it, 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 it's divided by 126 yeah. restaurants. Yeah. It's not too. It's yeah. not a lot. It's 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 not a lot. Approximately a thousand dollars. I mean, you're looking like I'm making the math on that. It's twenty bucks. It's amazing that other rest that other yeah, yeah, like two martinis. It's amazing that other areas of the A1 district chip in that are not nearly as restaurant tense as we are. Um, it's an interesting suggestion. I know I'm going to be in a huge minority in saying this, but um, you just said that there's not the restaurants in this neighborhood from. Well, I, I think that was the direction of conversation. But if this was if this was a summer meeting, the the one of the hot topics would be the activity with the valley, <coughs> the people on Hanover Street, the amount of people in the restaurants. Why are the windows open? You know, they're open to eleven. This guy was open till twelve. This guy had a singer over here, and the people who were in front of this restaurant that they got out at two o'clock and they just stood around all night. And then those people went down and talked to those people at this restaurant, and then the valet didn't show up, and the cabbies were out there beeping, and then before you know it, the whole conversation is now on all those restaurants. It just happens to be right now, we're in the middle of January, and you know, it's it's cold, and maybe it's just not as active, but again, you still have several thousand people that are in and out of these restaurants from, we'll just say, from 10 to 2 o'clock, and then they don't, they might not be getting out, maybe some of them are getting out at 1, some of them are getting out at 12, but that's still an active crowd. And then you got to remember the people that are coming back from the other bars and the restaurants. I'm not going to talk about the certain eateries that are open until 4 a.m. But then you have those issues too. And they're on Hanover Street, and they're on another street. So they do have an impact on the amount of people that want to stay out. We're trying to get them in the house, and there's more than enough places for them to go to say, "Yeah, I'm just going over, I'm just going up there to grab a slice of pizza." I'm, you know. So again, you know, we have a, as the captain mentioned, we've got a big brawl going on, a couple of hundred people down there. Tremont and uh, Stewart Street, 
you know, all of a sudden you're going to see a lot of the resources get in their cars and bombing down there. It's just their fellow offices, and then they have to leave here. You, you get permanent offices in place that might be part of that whole thing. Again, it sounds like we're not really pushing it, the issue, but it's when you really look at the amount of restaurants and the, and the cost, you're talking, again, I don't want to be quoted on that, but I think it comes out to two martini <laughs> I mean, a lot of, a lot of other cities do this too. You know, in a tourist, <coughs> a tourist area, many other cities have reimbursable patrols by the merchants. You, it's a common practice. A, a lot of people feel, and I have heard Phil talking before, about, you know, the meals tax went up, and, and, and people feel that, you know, especially if they own the property, they feel property tax. They, they, some people, I mean, I'm not going to subscribe to this, but they feel that these services should be provided with the tax, they, which they should. But what I'm saying is, I believe that. The businesses, I'm not saying that you drain the businesses for a police deal too, but I will say this, and I know the business owners in the, in the room, if it's for the greater good of the neighborhood, it only benefits the business community. So if they can pitch in $50, four restaurants can pony up 50 each for four hours, you know, and they rotate it. Or if we had a effective chamber of commerce, and there are some things in the works that to, to build a co-op or build a some type of partnership with the city services and with the business community, um, Maybe that's something down the road where people pay a membership into a co-op. They do it in New York City, all over Manhattan. People have the Soho brand, I'm um, Soho partnership or the Flatiron District partnership. And businesses pay into a nonprofit, and with that money, they help businesses redo their storefronts. They 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 um, do streetscape work. They put benches in, and then they do all kinds of stuff. And part of that is public safety. They pay for details. So it's like something that can, it's something that can be done. But I, I understand sometimes people feel that their tax, you know, the money they're paying taxes should provide that. Do you have a question, Colin? No. I Anyone have a question other than Colin? Because we're going to move on. We're going to take her question and take maybe a couple more, and then we have an agenda. To I agree with you, Stephen. I own two businesses in the North End, and I agree. I think that's a great idea to have the businesses um, take a, a detail bar. Somehow, I, you know, I have two restaurants, so I wouldn't mind doing that because... How do you go, how do you, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, how do you enforce? This has been, this has been, I remember a year ago, at one of these meetings, we talked about it and nothing was ever done. So how do you move forward to get this done? Well, we could have the council organize a meeting if anyone interested, any businesses interested that want to pay into it would be the first step. If, if that's something if the council wants to do. Who wants to pay? Yes, I'm going to pay. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> that question, but details don't necessarily always get filled. Is that correct? correct. That's, this one that's always correct. get filled. Well, this is here what I'm envisioning. If, if we do it the way I would want to do it, is have it be a reimbursable all the time, like we have with the Suffolk Patrol. Because that way we can make sure it's filled. Because details aren't always filled. An officer is like an independent contractor, he can decide whether to do or not do a detail. A lot of times, you know, Friday, Saturday nights, they're not looking to do busy, busy details where they're going to have to deal with trucking people. They would rather, you know, stand outside the Edison truck go to on realistically and not have to deal with anything, really. So they choose not to do it. We can't force them to do details. That's why a lot of places say, well, we try to hire details, which is true. They did, and they don't get anyone. But this type of, what we're thinking of would be a reimbursable overtime patrol, where that way we would have an officer scheduled, because that's the way I schedule them. Well, I'd be willing to work with Something we can work on. And, and that, 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 that right. We did have this discussion last year, and we can we can definitely follow up with you. I I, I will follow up with you. I see you all the time. There's two minor things now. It's it, it, when you look at it, the size of Hanover Street. You're really talking about both ends of Hanover Street. You're probably looking at a good portion of Salem Street because as we all know, you can't be a one end of Hanover Street and not expect to get any complaints about the other. Oh, ones. absolutely. And uh, well, that's that's all. <laughs> you know, one of the things I was going to say is Boca's Bakery has the details for 4 in the morning. Why can't it be that businesses in the North End, if they're open between 12 and 4 or whatever their hours are, are required to have a detail, are forced to have they a must detail? Be standards, because uh, I think the no, standing not, presence not of an officer, yeah, that, they should be. No, I, well, I agree with you. That would, I mean, if someone's walking down the street and sees, you know, here, there, was a few businesses open late for 4 in the morning, they see that there's presence, office of presence The detail clock at Bob is actually, is awesome. I, like that. I, I tell mean, you, Jimmy Earl yeah, tells people to be quiet, he moves the groups. I've been out there and seen him. He does a great job. Yeah. Just a volunteer. Yes, but he's strictly a volunteer. Mm -hmm. Uh, to do the details, but 
Again, I agree with you. What I'm saying, not the, I know the details are sometimes difficult to get, but why can't the businesses be forced, if they've opened that way, to have to hire a detailer? We, we, we can't force them. We can't force them. What I was why don't you try to organize a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce and whatever you think, with, with, with the captain, and discuss it. And, and use the new boss president, too. And sit down and just discuss the possibility. There you go. Yeah. I'm going to take one more question from you, and then Dolan had a question. And I'm very sure it's right. going to take more than two cops to handle this neighborhood. And if anybody thinks otherwise, they're in La La Well, then maybe they can two get two. Maybe we can get a bunch of restaurants that will donate well, enough to get two. Right. They're coming in from the half down that station. But we'll have that discussion. We'll maybe get the police back right. here with the chamber. All right, you want to jump on to the next it's subject, am I correct? Cops. Well, well, it's 10 of 8. I have a couple people. All right, no, all right. Quick question. Just because we don't have you here that often, could you update us on hazmat enforcement on uh, North, North Washington and across? The hazmat enforcement. Yeah, I mean, I, I, is it been a problem when they're not taking the roads? Uh, because it's wintertime, we, we're not out as much. We don't see the trucks going by as much uh, this time of year. But are they continuing to enforce and are, are they forcing traffic out onto the alternate routes? We have a, a hazmat, hazmat group, right? Yeah, we have a hazmat unit. Uh, they, they are they are out there. Mm -hmm. They're still Every, working during the winter season. Yes, they haven't still, seen any trucks stop. Is what I'm asking. No, they they're out there. Jimmy Davis, <coughs> one of the offices, he he has our area. Uh, I'll, I'll mention it to him. Yeah, but they, I've seen them on North Wash on occasion. Couldn't give you exact numbers, but we can get them. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, the state police do circle the area right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, the agency is the Yeah, they, 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 yeah. Stop the trucks. Yeah. they, they have a truck, truck team. Certainly, the yeah. state police have the jurisdiction to stop anyone within, within the city. Usually, within the city, though, uh, it, it does. I know that that's been a favorite of theirs in the past, North Washington Street Bridge area. I'll have to uh, I'll check with them. Near the Tip O'Neill Tunnel every morning. Yeah. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing up.